This is going to be Chapter 1, Roles and Responsibilities of the Professional Paramedic. Uh, key concepts of this chapter, we're going to talk about the profession of paramedicine and how it combines aspects of public health, public safety, and health care. We're going to talk about the standards and the scope of practice, define pretty much the paramedic's knowledge, skills, and attitudes, uh, the paramedic's role as a healer, clinician, and teacher. We're going to talk a little bit about quality assurance and quality improvement and continuing education. And all of these kind of enhance the paramedic's individual practice and that of the profession as a whole. And pretty much also talk about the paramedic as a physician extender. And we're going to do this through stewardship, leadership, and followership. So first things first here. What is paramedicine? And it's pretty much a subset of medicine. In and out of hospital is a setting, and it can be both independent and interdependent. Yeah, let's talk about that for a second. In the independent fashions, we kind of do this on our own in our own profession. Examples of this would be disaster planning, response readiness, scene management, and emergency vehicle operations. And interdependent, we pretty much interact with emergency physicians and with that and the changes of our protocols and implementing through the, the medical, like medical control boards and whatnot, we bring the highest level of medical care outside of the hospital as possible, especially with us switching to something called an evidence-based medicine approach. And we are pretty much also at an intersection. We're in an intersection of healthcare, public health, and public safety. So the three kind of combine. So we are the tip of the spear on healthcare. We apply all the time public health and deal with public health issues. And we pretty much also deal with public safety. So because of that, those inner three connections, we have a synergism of our knowledge. Our, our knowledge itself is, is more vast. Uh, the practice of paramedicine requires extensive education and preparation, and this is generally done at the collegiate level, and it's an applied science. So the practice itself has tons of skills in it, so it involves patient care skills. The students that we teach, uh, work happens under the eye of preceptors, and how this works is, is in a mentoring fashion. So we see it done once, we actually go out there and we practice doing it once, and then we actually go out there in clinicals and perform it. And then our certification exam uh, is required for licensure. And even in Oklahoma here, uh, we require a national association of, or um, the NREMT, National Registry of Emergency Medical Technicians, their certification exam, and then we are certified, and then we are a national registry state. And it's constantly evolving. Uh, it's constantly evolving because every year they come out with new technologies and new things are applied. We also get these new technologies in continuing education. And we're one of the, the professions that require to have continuing education constantly because of everything's evolving. Uh, paramedics professional identity. Uh, we have our identity and our identity kind of revolves around um, the voluntary assumption of certain roles and responsibilities and your code of ethics. And your code of ethics are kind of your own but you should have them uh, for the profession as well. Uh, first role here also we're going to talk about is as a healer. And a healer is we help people physically, mentally, and spiritually um, relieve pain and suffering. It's based in part on science. So whenever we talk about that based on science and medicine, we base our healing and our ability to uh, pretty much sling medicine on science and evidence. Uh, we are stewards, and what a steward means is we are responsible for the profession. So, responsible for maintaining the ideals of medicine and to practice in an honorable manner, and we should be leaders. Uh, we should always set forth to be a leader first. The ability to affect the behavior of others, members of a team, and to accomplish the goals of patient care is what a leader is. Hallmarks of a profession. So at first, whenever we first started, paramedics in the past were kind of, kind of trained on the job. And they weren't considered professional, and were considered a technician. Uh, today's paramedic is in the process of professionalization. Uh, must meet certain criteria to become a professional. And an extensive educational preparation. So we're going to see more and more education put upon us. And we'll also see more programs at the bachelor's level and the master's degree level for a paramedic. 
Uh, qualities of a professional. Uh, extensive educational preparation, accreditation of educational programs, and that's what we're, we at Redlands Community College are going through right now, which is this little thing right here. Uh, mentoring, the ability to guide in educational development of someone. Certification, we do have certification and licensures. Uh, licensing, professional development. Uh, do we have the ability to develop professionally and continue our, uh, our education? Uh, another way we can do this is by actively participating as a professional in an association or society. So National Association of Emergency Medical Technicians would be an example of this. Current paramedics are required to obtain extensive educational preparation and an increasing number of programs are being offered. This includes bachelor's degree programs and even higher. So this is table 1-2, partial list of the 20 first, 21 competencies of healthcare professionals. And let me get that erased here really quick. Uh, for the 21st century from the Pew Health Commission, and embrace a personal ethic and social responsibility in service, excite ethical behavior in all professional activities, uh, provide evidence-based clinical competent care, integrate population-based care and services into practice, uh, improve access to health care for those with unmet health care needs, provide culturally sensitive care to a diverse society, use communication and information technology effectively and appropriately, work in an interdisciplinary team, practice leadership, contribute to a continuous improvement of health care system, continue to learn and help others learn. So we kind of do all those right now. It's just getting recognition for it and getting that associated in all this accreditation stuff and the application of all of these things in play and then we can start calling ourselves uh, a profession even though we know right now if you played medic for any time that we are a profession education systems now in the past we used to use the department of transportation national standards curriculum and this served as a basis for EMS education and then we kind of switched to a national standards curriculum and this lacked a unifying document so everything wasn't weren't quite all the T's crossed and the I's dotted on this and then the national EMS education standards kind of come out and in those education standards they started talking about accreditation and what accreditation does is it just pretty much proves or it asks a simple question there's not just one simple question but several simple questions that can you prove that you are teaching effectively and the big guys and big players into this are COAMPS and KHEP now COAMPS is the actual body under KHEP that comes out and performs the assessment but KHEP is the Commission on Accreditation of Allied Health Educational Programs and this ensures programs adhere to standards so if we say these are our standards then we will meet those standards and accreditation is evidence of a satisfactory report and in that report we have evidence base that we are doing what we said our standards were and we will be required for national certification examination now beginning in 2012 only those who complete their education in an accredited program will be able to seat for the paramedic national certification exam and this is a part of our accreditation package this new curriculum that we're actually working on right now so we are we have already placed in our ISSR and we are in the accreditation process other organizations and these are professional organizations and most of you all have heard of these National Registry of Emergency Medical Technician and these guys provide a certification process and the National Association of uh, uh, Medical Emergency Medical Technicians present pre-hospital represent pre-hospital care providers now the National Association is like a professional organization. The National Registry is the certification process, very simply. National Institute of Medicine Report. Now, in the National Institute of Medicine Report, EMS at the crossroads and hospital-based emergency care at a breaking point, um, this report spoke of dysfunctional and fragmented emergency services in the United States. And it encouraged standard standardization of emergency services through processes such like national accreditation of paramedic programs, national certification of paramedics, an organized effort at improving the delivery of patient care through cooperation with other healthcare professionals. Now, so all of these three things were, were kind of looked at here and whenever this report come out, we get kind of a poor report. So we're looking to change that is my is my point on this. Core values. So 
Clinical care is dictated through both protocols, guidelines, and algorithms. Protocols and guidelines are a systematic way to apply treatment, whereas an algorithm is pretty much the same as that, but an algorithm also can give you things like if threat levels, if you will, and this is how I would like you to manage your treatment in the future. An example of this. Um, I tried this and it didn't work. I had clinical indication so I got it more aggressive and I got more aggressive. It's the burden of proof on the paramedic to explain why he increased his threat level and provide in empirical evidence the clinical indications that were present. And we're going to do that through, this is what we can do. This is what is suggested by, an example of this would be AHA guidelines. And they also have algorithms. But in those algorithms, an example of this would be an airway management algorithm. So the patient had respiratory distress. The BLS methods were not working. I moved to a more aggressive approach. That did not work either. So at that point, I facilitated this airway. Uh, key professional attributes. We're still talking about professional attributes and the profession in general. And the human side is dictated by core values, uh, and caring is the first core value. So in that, we have a Pearl's mnemonic. That means partnership, empathy, apology, respect, legitimization, and support. And as we talk about these a little bit, partnership, acceptance of the patient's wishes to be involved in and control their own health care. <clears throat> empathy, emotional understanding of the patient's feelings. Not sympathy, empathy. I understand what you're going through. I cannot put myself in your place, but I can sure understand what you're going through. Apology, willingness to share mistakes with the patient and apologize if necessary. Respect, non-judgmental attitude regardless of professional circumstances. Legitimization, <clears throat> listen and seek to understand the patient and their concern regardless of how insignificant the problem may be. It does not matter what the emergency is. Whenever they called 911, it was an emergency to them. Support. Offer support and be a patient advocate. Always represent and do the best interests of the patient. Integrity and diplomacy. <clears throat> unabashed Integrity is unabashed truthfulness with the patient. And diplomacy, a thoughtful consideration of spoken words. Think just a couple of seconds before you speak. Roles of a paramedic. There are multiple roles here that we're going to talk about, and we'll kind of talk about each one of these. The role of a healer, a clinician, a patient advocate, a researcher, and a teacher. All right, first job role we're going to talk about here is as a healer, and that's pretty much our primary role. Uh, we provide support during any illness, and we're going to see a variety of illnesses as a paramedic uh, revolves around compassion. Second job role here is a clinician, and if we went to somebody's clinic we would expect to go to a doctor's office. Well, the paramedics clinic is an ambulance. And the first rule in this clinic is to do no harm. We're going to see extended scope of practices being performed as our progression for, uh, as our profession progresses, especially in the area of uh, critical care transport would be an example of this. Specialty care transport, we're going to see all different kinds of extended scope and extended practice uh, protocols placed into this. The self-evaluation and continuous quality improvement, very simply, you should spot check yourself every day. Um, and as far as self-evaluation goes, you should know your weaknesses and your strengths. Continuous quality improvement does is it helps you identify those weaknesses and strengths. If you educate yourself or reinforce yourself on those weaknesses, it will make you a better paramedic. And we have continuous medical education. Uh, our profession requires a certain amount of continuing education every year. And we have to perform that to relicense. And then professional development. An easy way to do professional development. State and national EMS conferences, regional workshops, uh, guidance from the medical directors is over your service, and EMS trade journals. Uh, these are some examples, figure 1-1 in the book of EMS trade journals. 
Another job role is a researcher. EMS practices are based on an in-hospital practice or anecdotal experience. And just because something has worked in the past, well, it's always worked like that. That doesn't mean that's the way it should work in the future. We have switched now to evidence-based approach, so if there is no evidence that this technique works, we're probably not going to do it anymore. Examples of this are going to be treatment modalities, varying changes in drug treatment as well. Uh, evidence-based medicine is more reliable and valid because it's evidence-based. As a teacher, there's teaching moments in every call. Uh, public education, we're going to see us helping with that on emergency calls on a one-to-one -one basis. Uh, or in actual public education programs, um, there, we must be ready to learn, and there's always teachable moments on every call. Examples of this would be diabetic wake-ups, be supportive, be an advocate, help them with their health care. And there's a nice little acronym to remember here as far as public education. It's called PEER. Uh, public information stands for the P and I. The E stands for education. And then there's relations. Uh, the next table, we're going to look at a table on the next page. It kind of talks about ways that we can implement these things. So as far as public information goes, press conferences, newspaper announcements, annual reports to government boards and councils, as far as public education, we can do CPR classes, life-saving classes, pediatric drowning education, elderly fall prevention classes. All of these kind of sell our product or sell our profession. Um, public relations, open house, and blood pressure clinics are easy ways to get out into the public and show off your profession. Other roles of a paramedic, we are a patient advocate. We should defend and support the patient's rights. We are also physician extenders, which are, there's three topics we're going to talk about here, stewardship, leadership, and fellowship. As a steward as a, of a physician or of the medical practice, the paramedic upholds the noble tradition of medicine. As a leader, we should always be a leader. Paramedic assumes the role of being in control. The paramedic acts as a team coach. There are qualities in the book that they talk about of a good leadership or the five C's. A leader is competent. A leader has command presence. They are choreographed. They have good communication skills. And they have the ability to perform conflict resolution. As a follower, or followership, a good leader should always be a good follower. In conclusion, paramedicine is a pattern of thinking and behaviors, outward manifestation of thinking consistently applied in varying situations until a practice has been achieved. The art of paramedicine is the ability to apply that practice while maintaining focus using one's wits and creative abilities. And I'll assure you, in austere conditions, you will need to be creative. References used for this slide set are going to be the Professional Paramedic, Volume 1, pages 2 through 14 in Delmar Learning. And if you have any questions over this chapter, this is Chapter 1, please feel free to give me a contact. My name is Roy Smith, smithr at imsa.net or 405-219-7613. Thank you.